Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a map. A map of Germany with a bunch of coloured pins all over it. And this is a map I've seen crop up in a few different places on the internet. For example, here it is in a Black Pigeon Speaks video. Um, here's someone pretending to be a kangaroo while talking about it. I don't really know what's happening there. And it also shows up in the videos of definitely not racist German person, Kraut and T. And let's give him the honor of explaining what this map is. Let me show you something. This here is a Twitter account called XY Einzelfall. All it does is tweet out confirmed cases of migrant crime, then creates a dot and places that dot on a map of Germany. Seven months ago, this is what the map looked like. Well, this is what it looks like today. No, you're not looking at a coloured out picture of Germany. This is a representation of migrant crime here over the course of the last year since the migrant and refugee crisis. So, this map shows confirmed instances of migrant or refugee crime. Confirmed. Just remember that word. Just in case. So, this map has been put together by Facebook group XY Einzelfall. And it's not a racial thing, obviously, they're just concerned with documenting refugee and migrant crime, and nothing else. Race has nothing to do with it. Except, well, I'm what we call a rational skeptic here on YouTube, and I've come up with an alternative hypothesis. What if this map isn't really about documenting only confirmed cases of migrants and refugee crime? and is instead really about making a scary looking map to frighten people into being racist. Now that might sound crazy, I know, but it's a possibility, isn't it? So how do we go about proving or disproving this theory? Well, what we're going to have to do is have a closer look at this map and the sources contained thereupon. And there are different sections on this map for theft, arson, terror attacks, sexual assault and so on, and we're going to be looking at a few of these sections. We're going to take a look at the sources and see if these are actually confirmed migrant crimes or instead a load of old bollocks. So firstly I have to mention duplicates. Now some of these pins are for the same incidents I'm sorry to say. Uh, for example these two arson pins in Hanover point to the same news story and these three terror pins in Dusseldorf also point to the same news story. And these two other terror pins also in Dusseldorf also point to the same news story. And if you look deeper into that particular news story actually, you'll see the suspects in that case are German nationals, not refugees. Dort verhaften sie den deutschen Konvertiten Sebastian B. Der Vorwurf, Mitgliedschaft in der zurzeit wohl brutalsten terroristischen Vereinigung. And actually, if we look even deeper into this news story, we'll see that the map links to a page describing Sebastian B's sentencing in April of 2016, but he was actually arrested in early 2015. So if we're looking for confirmed cases of migrant crime in 2016, well, this wasn't a migrant, it was a German guy, and the crime didn't even take place in 2016. And this is on the map multiple times. And to be honest, I consider this map busted right here, you know. It's over, this map is bullshit, clearly, but... You know, since we're here anyway, we may as well put the work in and kick it while it's down for another, say, 15 minutes. You see, this map is not based on any police or government statistics. It is a civilian group. I believe comprised of multiple people collecting news stories and police reports, none of whom seem too interested in checking for duplicates. So keep in mind when you look at this map, a lot of these pins are actually separate instances of the same crime. So anyway, first off let's take a look at arson, the horrible crime of arson, intentionally setting fire to things with the intent to cause damage. Now, there are a bit over 100 arson cases on this map, so let's have a look at a few. Here's one in Duisburg. Um, in July in Duisburg, saying that wrong, 
Uh, some trash was set on fire in an uninhabited building by an unknown suspect. He's described as very thin, 35 to 45 years old, and as having dark skin. Uh, so that's arson, but is he a migrant? He wasn't arrested, and the police don't know who he is, so he could be anyone. There's no mention of him being a refugee or a migrant. He could have been born in Germany, who knows, but that's just one pin. Another one in Soltau. Uh, some teenagers set a fire in the woods. They're between 13 and 15 years old. Southeastern European look, apparently, but again, they weren't caught. So there's no way to know if they're migrants or refugees, or neither. Whoever included this pin on the map is just assuming that they're refugees based upon their described skin colour. In this case, in Schneeberg, a refugee home had to be evacuated because of a triggered fire detector. But there's no indication there was actually a fire. In this case, in Wendlingen, I am butchering the names of these German towns, I'm sorry, a refugee burned some toast and set the toaster on fire. Now, nobody was hurt, uh, but there was a lot of smoke. Now, is a small accidental cooking fire that injures nobody and causes minimal damage really worthy of being called arson? I mean, we've all burned toast before, haven't we? You know, my dad once set the cooker on fire making bacon. Is he an arsonist? You know, I'm having kind of a hard time being afraid of this refugee and his burnt toast. Now, before I'm accused of cherry-picking a few examples out of the entire map here, I have went through every single one of these so-called arson cases on the map. And so, cue the music. A cooking fire. A cooking fire. A cooking fire. Another cooking fire. Another cooking fire. Uh, firecrackers set off a fire alarm accidentally. A cooking fire, another cooking fire, improper disposal of a cigarette, another cooking fire, another cooking fire, another cigarette, improper use of candles, no injuries there, amazingly, another cooking fire, another cooking fire, uh, there was an accident in a kitchen when someone was cooking uh, that caused a small fire, um, another cooking fire, a possible electrical fault. Imagine that, that's awesome now, apparently. Electrical faults. Um, another cooking fire. Another cigarette. Improper usage of a candle. Again. Another cooking fire. Improper disposal of wood embers. And a bunch more cooking fires. Lastly, I'd like to look at my favourite cooking fire story. A Syrian in Ovenstad left a pot on the stove uh, and it went on fire. And the reason this is my favourite one of these stories is because there's a picture of the offending pot. Um, I guess not much happens in Ovenstad generally. Now actually, almost half the pins in this map are for fires that were either started accidentally or have unknown causes. And remember, some of those intentional fires were started by people who are not known to be immigrants or refugees because they weren't caught. They were just started by people who witnesses say were not white. And if we look at the arrest statistics here, we see that more than half of the news stories on this map make no mention of an arrest taking place, either because the fire was accidental or because the suspect is unknown. So how many pins on this map are news stories about a refugee or migrant actually being convicted of arson? Well, you can count them on one hand. The problem for the XY Einzelfall people though is that this doesn't look as scary as this, does it? Well, maybe if we scroll out far enough. Oh god, look, Germany's on fire. So anyway, let's take a look at robberies and theft. Now, there are 5,500 sources here, and my German is absolutely rubbish. So, if I looked at all of these sources, I would still be making this video next year. So, I decided to take a look at the first 50 sources as a representative example. And let's look at a couple. 
um, in Dusseldorf in February, an 88-year-old handbag was stolen by a thief. He was 20 to 30 years old, dressed in dark, and had a dark skin colour. He was not apprehended, and there's absolutely no way to know his migrant status. Again, maybe he was born in Germany, maybe he migrated to Germany 20 years ago, who knows? And this is something you see time and time again on the map. Suspects are described as having dark skin, or a southern appearance, or a Mediterranean appearance, or a Latin appearance, with no other identifying information that could tell us if they're actually refugees. The XY Einzelfall group is just making the assumption that all non-white criminals are not German. Even in cases like the following from Hamburg, now the suspect here is described as being a southerner, but also as speaking German without an accent. Now speaking German without an accent would suggest to me that he's not a refugee or a migrant, or at least not a recent one, but regardless it's marked down here as a migrant crime. Of the 50 pins I looked at here, only 5 connected to news stories in which the suspect's status as a migrant or refugee was confirmed. The other 45 were all speculative, and based only on physical descriptions of the suspect. So at this point in my source checking, I was starting to get the feeling that the XY Einzelfall people that made the map weren't really interested in migrant crime or refugee crime, what this is really about, it seems, is non-white crime. And it's hard to argue with this when we look at stories like the following one from Hanover, and this is one of the murder pins. A suspect named as Ali Kemal S was wanted for the murder of a woman in Istanbul, in Turkey. Now, the suspect in this case is from Hanover in Germany. He is a German national, and he allegedly killed someone in Turkey, a foreign country, and this is marked down as a migrant murder on the map, and I guess, you know, kinda, but isn't that cheating a little bit, guys? You know, migrant crime. German migrants going to other countries and murdering people, you know. Anyway, enough nibbling around the edges here, let's get into the meat of it, the terror pins for all the terrible terrorism. All these pins are there for acts of terror, so let's look at a few. So in July, in Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe, a German national was arrested for online support of the Islamic State. Now, in what sense is this a migrant or refugee crime? That's a German guy supporting the Islamic State. Why is that being blamed on refugees? Uh, next up, Eisenhutenstadt. Jesus Christ. A German man was said to have explosives and be planning a terror attack. Uh, police raided his house and found no evidence of him planning a terror attack, no Islamist material or explosive material, although he did have two firecrackers. Now, that's not a terror attack. It's not even a planned terror attack. What this news story says, essentially, is a native German man owns two firecrackers. And that's marked on the map as a refugee terror attack. And again, before I'm accused of cherry picking here, I looked at every terror pin on this map. And first off, a lot of the pins here are for crimes that did not actually take place in 2016. There's a lot of cases of suspects being arrested in Germany for crimes that have taken place in other countries, often in previous years. Now, they don't really count as terrorist incidents in my mind. If anything, those pins are good. They show that the German police are good at catching international fugitives. So, great, the more of those pins, the better, to be honest. And of course, we've seen a couple of these already, but there's a lot of incidents of German nationals being involved in terrorism. Let's look at the chart. Now, just over half of the cases on this map do concern refugees or migrants into Germany, believe it or not. Now, the second largest slice of the pie are German nationals, and next, there's a certain amount of stories in which the suspect's nationality is not mentioned or is unknown, and a small percentage uh, concern mixed groups, that's German nationals and foreign nationals working together. Now, remember, 
a significant part of that half of the pie that are refugees and migrants didn't necessarily commit any crimes in Germany. In fact, there aren't many actual terror attacks in Germany in 2016 on this map. Uh, we can go through them right now, actually. Um, a teenage girl stabbed a police officer non-fatally, claiming ISIS ordered her to do it. She is a German national. A 53-year-old convert to Islam attacked the police. Now, she is a German national. A 12-year-old was arrested in connection with a terror plot to bomb a market. Now, he's a German national too. Uh, a Syrian who was denied asylum blew himself up, killing himself and injuring others. Um, and the next is quite a famous one. An Afghan refugee attacked people on a train with a hatchet, injuring five people. There is also the awful terror attack on the Berlin market the other day. Now, um, the police initially didn't uh, know who uh, committed that attack. They ar arrested a Pakistani national and then let him go, saying there was no evidence. And um, they then suspected a uh, Tunisian man who was on the run. Uh, he was a failed asylum seeker in Germany who was uh, under police surveillance or had been under police surveillance in the past and was in the process of being deported. Uh, he was just today uh, shot dead by police in Milan. So if it was him, uh, that's good. Apart from that, though, we have at most a couple of refugees, a rejected asylum seeker, and a bunch of German nationals. Now, whatever immigration policy you think could have stopped all of these attacks better also come with a free time machine, because a lot of these people were born in Germany as the children or even grandchildren of immigrants. They are Germans. They have German passports. They're only on this map because they're not white. Actual refugees and asylum seekers, by and large, don't tend to do much terrorism, it seems. You know, Europe-wide, there's large-scale attacks perpetrated by foreign terror groups, and there's lone wolf, disaffected second-generation immigrants and the likes, but not many actual attacks carried out by successful asylum seekers. And I'll leave you with a thought. At the time of writing this, there are 12,000 pins in this map. Now, apparently, Germany accepted more than 1 million migrants in 2015. Now, even if we round down to 1 million, and we ignore anyone that arrived in 2016, and we assume every pin in this map is a genuine refugee or migrant crime, that is, no duplicates, no false stories, no murders that actually took place in Turkey, no German nationals committing crimes, no unknown suspects, no burnt toast recorded as arson. Even if we assume all of those things, and we assume every single individual pin in this map was a crime committed by a different individual migrant, as represented here, only 1.2% of the migrants who came into Germany in 2015 would be criminals. This map is silly. It is not a list of confirmed migrant and refugee crimes. It is ridiculous and unscientific moral panic. It's bigotry, anti-immigrant sentiment, and anti-Islamic racism. If you base any of your beliefs or actions on this map, you have been fooled. I'm sorry, I don't want to be mean about anyone, you know, it's never nice when you get to the point in the video where it sounds like you're saying, if you fell for this, you're a moron. You know, I'm not saying that, because in fairness, it's a pretty slick production at first sight. Not many people are going to go and actually check hundreds of German sources, you know, understandably, and the group who made the map are relying on that. You're just meant to go, oh wow, look at that scary map. I guess refugees must all be criminals. You know, come on guys, let's try and up our game a bit, eh? Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I'd just like to say before I go that I am not attempting to downplay or ignore any actual crimes or actual terror attacks that took place. Of course, if a large number of new people move into a country, the absolute number of crimes is going to go up just because there's more potential criminals, and more potential victims too. I'm not saying none of these crimes happened, or that none of these terror attacks happened, because of course, some of them did. But just because some did, doesn't mean we should start pretending that more did. 
The purpose of this video was to debunk this map as a legitimate source, not make excuses for actual crimes that happened. Can you tell I'm trying to cut down on the incoming wave of dislikes and people commenting, but you're ignoring all the actual crimes carried out by immigrants? <sighs> It doesn't matter, really. Those people aren't going to watch this far into the video, so whatever. Bring them on. The more, the merrier. Uh, and before I go, I'd just like to thank everyone who helped or offered to help with the translations of the news articles used in this video. A lot of very kind people helped me out or offered to help me out, and I'd like in particular to thank at RuneMian on Twitter, who did the bulk of the translation work, so thanks a lot. If you'd like more videos like this, consider sending me a dollar on Patreon. This is your last chance to get in on my very first month on Patreon and get your name in the credits of a video next month. And what a great way to start out the new year that would be, hey? You could show all of your friends and say, Hey, look, there's my name in the credits of a video with a 1 to 10 like to dislike ratio. Anyway, farewell everyone, happy holidays, and I'll see you all next year.